Washington A House panel voted on Wednesday to subpoena Kellyanne Conway for her testimony after she failed to show to a hearing at which a special counsel told the committee she should be fired from the White House for her egregious, repeated, and very public violations of federal ethics law. The House Oversight and Reform Committee's action against Ms. Conway escalates the standoff between the Democratic House and President Trump as the White House stonewalls Democratic oversight inquiries, moving to keep the deliberations of its top officials confidential. The White House blocked Ms. Conway, a counselor to the President, from testifying about allegations of repeated violations of a federal ethics law that prohibits government officials from engaging in political activities at work. Her failure to show set up yet another clash between the executive branch and Congress that may end with an administration official held in contempt of Congress. Rep. Justin Amish of Michigan, the one Republican who has called for President Trump's impeachment, joined Democrats to vote for the subpoena, 25-16. In pointed testimony, Henry J. Kerner, the special counsel, whose work is unrelated to the office that was run by Robert S. Mueller III, detailed how the White House counselor's conduct created an unprecedented challenge to his ability to enforce the federal ethics law, known as the Hatch Act. The repeated violations, combined with her unrepentant attitude, are unacceptable from any federal employee, let alone one in such a prominent position, Mr. Kerner testified. Mr. Kerner was nominated by Mr. Trump for the position in 2017, and previously worked for former Rep. Daryl Issa, a fiercely partisan Republican from California, when he was the chairman of the House Oversight and Reform Committee. House Democrats on the panel requested Ms. Conway's testimony after the Office of Special Counsel, an independent government agency tasked with enforcing the ethics law, recommended in a report released earlier this month that President Trump fire Ms. Conway, one of his most dog defenders, citing her penchant for partisan attacks on Democratic Party candidates during interviews in her capacity as the president's counselor. For Democrats, who have made imposing stricter ethics rules on federal officials one of the centerpieces of their legislative agenda, the opportunity to shed light on one of Mr. Trump's most public advisors is a propitious opening. Rep. Elijah E. Cummings of Maryland, the chairman of the committee, made clear he is prepared to hold Ms. Conway in contempt if she does not comply with the subpoena. There are rarely issues that come before our committee that are so clear-cut, but this is one of them. This is about right and wrong, Mr. Cummings said. Contrary to claims Ms. Conway and President Trump have made, this is not a conspiracy to silence her or restrict her First Amendment rights. This is an effort to enforce federal law. A rhetorical bulldog equipped with a vast arsenal of spinning and deflecting techniques, Ms. Conway would have surely relished the opportunity to spar with Democratic lawmakers on live television. But directed by the White House not to testify, she was represented in the hearing room on Wednesday with an empty chair. Republican lawmakers on the panel stepped in to defend her and turn the scrutiny on Mr. Kerner, adopting an argument deployed by Pat A. Cipollone, the White House counsel that the office of the special counsel had treated the Republican administration unfairly and that his report was influenced by personal pique against Ms. Conway. The report is outrageous, it's unprecedented, it's unfair, and it's just wrong, Rep. Jim Jordan of Ohio, the committee's top Republican, said, arguing that Mr. Kerner's office doesn't like the fact Ms. Conway is conservative. She's being targeted because she is good at what she does, and this is why this should not stand, Mr. Jordan said. Mr. Jordan's tactic was reminiscent of his attacks on Mr. Mueller and his team, as well as on FBI investigators who opened the investigation into the Trump campaign and its possible ties to Russian election interference. The Hatch Act is designed to ensure that government employees avoid the appearance of partisanship and do not use their official authority to influence the results of an election. At a time when the country appears sharply divided on partisan lines, Mr. Kerner said, the public must be able to trust that regardless of which party is in power, or which candidate a federal employee supports, federal law is administered uniformly and without partisan bias. Bolstered by Mr. Trump's declaration that he would not fire her, 
Ms. Conway has remained unapologetic in the face of the charges and dismissed outright the office's report earlier this week as a politically motivated ploy. They want to silence me now. These are my First Amendment rights, they want to chill freedom of speech because they don't know how to beat him at the ballot box, Ms. Conway said on Monday in an interview with Fox and Friends. Even if the Hatch Act applies, our position is, I haven't violated it. If Ms. Conway defies the subpoena, she would likely become the third administration official a House panel moves to hold in contempt. The committee previously voted to recommend holding William P. Barr, the Attorney General, and Wilbur Ross, the Commerce Secretary, in contempt after the White House invoked executive privilege to block the disclosure of documents on the decision to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. The Judiciary Committee also recommended the household Mr. Barr in contempt, for his refusal to provide the panel a UNR-acted version of the Mueller report and its underlying evidence.